Hello, it's Howard Rheingold. This is the second in a series of short episodes about the counterculture origins of contemporary cyberculture. In particular, the way some of the new communalists from the farm in the 1960s uh, ended up at one of the early virtual communities, The Well, in the mid-1980s, where I came into the story. I was teaching uh, my course on virtual community and social media at Berkeley and, and brought in a, a real living new communalist, John Coate, who had joined the farm uh, when he was 16 years old, as he explained in the previous episode, and happened into the early days of the well, and explains here the connections he saw. Uh, the, the text I was teaching uh, during this class was Fred Turner's From Counterculture to Cyberculture, and you can see some of the terms on the wall uh, behind me on the blackboard uh, describing the ways uh, Fred Turner saw the emergence of a new kind of social form in which uh, people from different kinds of networks used boundary objects to create trading zones and network entrepreneurs like Stuart Brand and, and Kevin Kelly and, and myself and John Cote and, and many others used the cyber connection between uh, physical social worlds that had previously not been connected to create our own kinds of ties and, and social and, and knowledge and economic capital. But, but before we thought of uh, any of those uh, ideas, any of those theories or abstractions, we were involved with each other. We were involved with the kinds of relationships that came about, and John talks about how that first started happening. The guy who went off to, uh, to join the farm uh, left, left the farm uh, when, when his kids were fairly grown and was hired by Stuart Brown to be the, the marketing director of the well. So I was at a party complaining about it to this one, another one of my friends from the farm who was the one-man operation for this uh, little online service and, and I didn't even really exactly know what that was but he was for this little online service called The Well and he said, well I need help why don't you come work for me? Well, yeah, sounds good, sounds interesting why not? What the heck? I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what it was about. I wasn't hired for my computer skills. I didn't know anything about computers. I had never sat in front of a computer. It didn't take me very long to figure out that it really wasn't, we weren't really in the computer business. We were in the relationship business. And so I thought, oh, that, I know something about that. And so, but we didn't have any money. And so I thought, well, the thing to do is to make this experience be so meaningful to the people using it that they'll market it, that they, that they will do it. And so it was, it was my effort to, to accomplish that that became known as what, as what became known as community building. There really wasn't a concept for that much at that time, and I didn't really think about it that way, but that's that's really what it was. The marketing strategy of the well was really interesting. No money was spent on publicity, but they gave free accounts to journalists. And the word really spread that way. And then people who ended up spending a lot of time on the well creating conversation, John Cote started hanging out with us. So at one point, John Cote came to my house and started having conversation. I thought, why is this guy hanging out with me? One of my techniques was to go visit them. I would literally just say, hey, where do you live? Can I come over and see you? Hey, want to have some coffee? Want to meet? This is when I met Howard, was through this. And uh, this was, this, that was really how we got started. John talked about the way that, um, that you would uh, buy meat at the butcher's shop and you would uh, send your kid to the school where, where there would be a school teacher, and then if you were in some kind of small village, you would see all these people at the dance on Friday night. I think that, I think that really, at its heart, it, it's, not, it's not that there weren't uh, 
meaningful social connections made all over the place in the online world. I think that for uh, I think that we just uh, were able to sort of plumb the depths, if you will, of how deep the relationships could really get. You know that that and that people could. It's, I think it's also important to understand that there was. A lot of people had a sort of a professional purpose there, either to learn or share or you know, a professional purpose and also a social purpose. And that both of those things really worked together. When you have work and play and, and you know, marriage and things like that all coming together, doesn't that start to seem kind of like a community? I think it does. So the idea that people in the same um, network forum would exhibit different roles, that they would socialize, they would have fun, they would organize what needed to be organized, and they would also exchange information, form businesses together in the same kind of flat space as what uh, Fred Turner point, points out as heterarchy and what um, he sees the network entrepreneurs as taking advantage of.